Good day kings and queens, welcome to another video. Today we will be going through an interesting game I recently played. It was a one day game, um, 24 hours per move from Chester.com against um, Elibusras, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Uh, he's been an opponent of mine for a couple of games. We do play from time to time. I hadn't played him in quite a while. And he sent me an invite, you know, the internet is a weird place, you make friends like that. And we played this game, and this again was the Karakan defense, and of course, by now you do know that I play the pun of attack. Now, let's just get into it, this will be a short video for you, just so that you can watch watch this uh, game. And uh, there's an important theme here that we'll discuss, which is the hanging points. So the game started out with, that is uh, E4. Right, he went c6, Karakan defense, d4, d5, e, d, c, d, c4. This is the beginning now of the pun of attack. He played knight f6, knight c3, pretty standard, knight um, c6, modern defense, knight f3, right? And here he played bishop g5, which is what I had said in my previous video. This, this is considered sort of like uh, the ultimate main line, right? And here I played this variation. The c takes on d5 variation. variation. This is still a book line. Knight takes on d5. And here, I played an interesting move. It's not the best move, but uh, it's playable. Bishop e2, right? Uh, there's a main line here that goes like something like um, queen b3, then bishop takes on f3, g takes on f3, and then e6, right? Then you have this position where queen takes on b7, knight takes on d4, bishop e5 check, Knight takes check, and I believe queen c7 check on the king. Uh, I, I can't really remember. I'm not that quite sure. Because you cannot play uh, this takes because of just queen a5 check, really. And uh, is there anything there? Oh, I'm not quite sure. Oh, I think even just bishop b4 check. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, but uh, there's this line, and as you can tell by the evil bar, this is dead equal. It's an equalizing line, right? Uh, this damage bone structure, a lot of grandmasters have played this. You can check games over the internet, Karuana, Grishuk, all your top level grandmasters have played this position numerous times with a draw, but uh, I was not about to go into that. I went into this line instead. Very chilled, also sort of like, uh, as you can tell here, after knight takes on d5, in, in fact from this move on, white sort of loses uh, the edge that he has. Because usually it's like a point something, but now it's dead zero zero. I think my stockfish is kind of like snoozing, but okay. So from with this bishop e2 line, it's like a balanced game, nothing fancy, nothing super confrontational whatsoever. So he goes e6, I short castles. Knight takes, as you can tell, is a bit of a dubious move you shouldn't really take because you sort of want to live white with this isolated pawn here. Because uh, in some isolated pawn positions, uh, you can play this interesting maneuver I once saw in a game, bishop uh, e7, bishop f6, knight bd6, and just uh, put a full clutch on this uh, knight here on d5, ensuring that this pawn will forever be isolated in the future. And then black can basically attack the pawn. Uh, in some lines, if even when the bishop is here on its home square, the white bishop, right? There's this uh, b6 line, bishop uh, b7 line, and all of that stuff. Like, this is stuff that has been explored many times by top level players. You can check out a lot of games, but he he took here, and so I took that was the best move, of course. Bishop e6. Actually, here also it's important to note I can still go queen b3, right? Just targeting the pawn, but then I thought of the queen c7. What am I doing really? Maybe rook b1. I thought of rook b1 ideas, right? Just trying to power pressure here and juice maybe b6 and then we have this uh maybe bishop b5 move coming in i don't know uh, but just put pressure on the queen side right and it's point eight as you can tell by the evil bar white is doing good in this position so i played h6 h3 i mean still a reasonable move not the best move very reasonable nonetheless bishop h5 and yeah i played bishop g5 an okay move, not the best move as well. Rook b1, in fact, was still the best move, I believe. And then he played queen a5. And yeah, I played what the engine thinks as a blunder, bishop d2. But it's an okay move, right? I 
calculated an insane line here and the line was because i see he wants to remove the defender of that bishop uh because now the queen here on a5 sees the bishop there right and he wants to take here and then his next move will obviously be winning the bishop unless i play something like queen d2 protecting this pawn protecting the bishop and then obviously if takes now and then just bishop takes and there's nothing there right however i thought wait how about i give him what he wants queen b3 right and then after bishop takes bishop takes and then queen takes uh sorry that's queen takes here on a5 on g5 and then queen takes there right and this is a fork of two pieces then i thought to myself ah he can shoot castle here right and then here it's very important that i take with the bishop and not the queen the reason why is if i take with the queen let's say i take with the queen and let's move bishop uh queen of four right and then upon okay queen a4 actually loses because after g3 okay not really but after g3 he can just play queen f6 right so even if takes here then the bishop falls right here so maybe here he can take the time to actually guard his bishop because the bishop is still hanging but then just a simple rook a d a uh rook a d8 guards the bishop even though the engine evaluates this is better for what because i i guess of this backward c pawn right this pawn is going to start marching I, I i i saw something like this i calculated this but then i thought to myself yeah let's just leave it there bishop d2 so i brought back my bishop just chilling nothing fancy um i'm still ready to play something like c5 uh c4 c5 uh but um here he played queen c7, which I believe was a good move as well. Because the queen, usually in these positions, always ends up here on queen c7, right? And here you will notice we have an important theme of uh, hanging pawns, uh, which we should always try to use and march forward and sort of build uh, around backwards, right? Maybe knight e5, bishop f4 if allowed, rook here, rook there, queen there, and just start pushing them. That's usually the idea. In, in these pawn themes anyway i played rookie one now it's important to note here as well i could have just gone d5 just trying to shred the position open d5 was very playable uh this pawn is mine it's not going anywhere however i i opted for i opted for uh rookie one yes rookie one and upon rookie one my opponent castle even here i still could have played uh d5 but actually i went for the i think this was the best move yes bishop d3 and then he played e5 right because the whole idea of bishop of rook e1 and then bishop e2 is to actually put more supporters right on this e5 square and try to get like a serious um a strong hold or basically strong control of the central square and from then onwards like play can continue from there right can jump in here maybe with the knight if allowed or move the bishop later in here over there a lot of stuff can happen a lot of stuff can happen so he played e5 immediately which was a balander and i played a bass move which is a difficult tactic to spot i'll give you a minute you can pause the video and try to find it bishop takes on h7 double exclaim this was brilliant i found this in the game and the point is my opponent played the bass move king h8 king h8 not indulging uh in my very very sinister and evil basically um endeavors and adventures if you will um because now if takes if king takes right you have knight g5 check now if king comes in here there's things like g4 uh g4 to capture on g5 the king is kind of like being smothered here if you can check right the knight controls those two squares uh, we have the bishop protecting the knight and also controlling the square in case of any like um double attack moves should the king oh sorry about that should the king land on here on c5 right and there's also this queen c3 check c2 check and then if f5 there's just knight here forking this and that and then still this g4 move i mean it's just on the cards right you can just play this g4 and go for this bishop either way even here and go for the check so he cannot do that and of course if uh as we've spoken about it already if king here just knight they discovered check and then i'm gonna win the queen right the bishop is gonna unleash an attack on the king there on h6 so if he goes back for example then just queen h8 
and then mats of threat, uh, mating threats, and then there's things like D5 maybe just dislodging the position. It's unpleasant. It's losing, basically. So bishop h... Uh, bishop takes on h7. Uh, I think it should be a theme of our uh, YouTube channel now. Bishop takes on h7 sacrifices. I played that in a French game at the tournament I was playing. If you haven't watched that video, I'll just put it up here now. You can just go watch it. And then king h8, bishop back to d, I mean to e4. Uh, the engine wanted me to put it here in f5. I thought I didn't really understand why, but I'll show you why the engine said bishop f5 was much better, right? Bishop f5 was much better, and then try to play this position because these pieces are kind of like on vacation on the uh, queen side of the board. And as you can tell, white is always ready to just go in. This bishop is already eyeing that one. That's go over there. This long diagonal is eyed by that. Once this is removed as an obstacle, we have that. We have the rook coming in, going in this way. Just typical ideas, right? If allowed and given the opportunity. That's why this is a uh, it's plus one point four, basically, just to explain. But I played bishop e4. And now here's the reason why bishop f5 was a move. Um here he played e d, which was the best move. And I played b uh bishop takes on c6. It still turned out well in the game, but the engineer gave an incredibly insane line. It gave C, D, and not immediately taken with the knight, because even in that variation, white will have a lot of activity as compensation for the pawn. Uh, it gave F5, bishop D5, knight takes, rook A, C1, right? That hits the queen over there. And then uh, queen B6, I believe. And then after, was it bishop C3? Was it bishop c3? Was it bishop c3? Yes, I think after... Um, no, it was not bishop c3. It was definitely not bishop c3. I think here there was a check. No, I think after rook a c7... Um, yes, there was first this check over here. There was uh, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, and then there was queen f7. Right, and after bishop g5 controlling the square so that no rook lands there, there was, uh, I believe, b6. Yes, I believe there was there was b6 over here, and just bishop, um, was it rook? Yes, rook here, and then after queen g6, this guards the bishop over there hits the, the bishop over here, then you go for the exchange with bishop e7 if takes, and then rook takes, and then if this rook gets over there, you just pick up a pawn, rook picks up this rook over here, queen picks up here, and at the end of this whole insane variation, white has a, and a beautiful turn too, this is uh, loose because it's overextended, and then this queen doesn't really see much of the board, it just sees here, over there, and here, really. Whereas, white's queen is, is just having a good time, okay? White's queen has the most access to the squares. This rook is extremely active as well. You get the point. I'm just doing geometry because I'm bored. Anyway, um, we'd have that type of position. And this is still winning, even though uh, white is just a boner, but positionally, this is crushing. The white, the black king has bank rank problems, right? It's not really entirely safe. There's all of that. So that's the line the engine gave. And this is why, because of this f5 move, bishop f5 in this position was much better. But I didn't I didn't know that at the time. I played bishop e4. Anyway, the game continued. Takes. And then I took right, which it, it, it doesn't really like. Engine thinks it's not that great. But then this was a blunder because after bishop takes, which was the best move, and queen takes, there was queen d4 threatening mate right now there's this beautiful battery over here which is what i was going for there was f6 guarding it queen h5 hits the bishop while also so this is you have to have good board vision because i saw this from like miles away queen here f6 queen there hits the bishop and here i thought he should play something like uh either g6 or just maybe queen e5 and try to come in this way and maybe that way i don't know but uh, maybe even queen here and just try to just get some way somehow you know but then he played the bad the, the the worst move which was queen takes on c3 it's a blunder it's losing queen takes h5 check 
king is forced to h7, I'm into g7, g8 I mean, queen, d5 check, rook f7, pick up the, the rook on d6, rook a, uh, rook a, f8, rook c8 first, he played queen a5, I played rook e7, forcing and uh, trying to force exchanges, of course I'm winning, he played rook a d8, I played uh, queen e6, and then here he played queen d5, which is a terrible move, and I missed an insane winning continuation, right? So after takes, 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 I played a check, and yeah, he was just, he resigned in, in this position, as you can tell by the flag, but yeah, he could have just played, for example, rook there, takes, king there, takes, rook here, takes, right? And look, I'm a piece up. Plus a pawn. I'm winning this, right? But this was winning even way earlier. So after queen here, instead of taking the queen, just rook c8. I saw this move afterwards. Because now he cannot take my queen like that. He loses a full rook. Check first, right? If king runs, then I just pick this up. And then now not only am I piece up, but a rook up, right? And if he blocks with the rook, rook takes first check. And then after king takes, and then rook takes, right? This is this is even much better. It's a better scenario. So queen d5 was a huge blunder. And if he comes with funny nasty checks, I mean, I just slide out of the way, right? He can't even play queen d8 check because then I'm just going to take it because the rook is pinned to that rook, to the king, and he can't even take. So after he takes here check, I don't even entertain him. I just take a check, king h8 or h7, then just queen takes g7 checkmate. So that is how the game could have gone. But after just this simple exchange, this was still winning. Uh, I was going to go for this line, of course. And um, as you can tell, okay, this is how the engine gives the line that it, it could have pro uh, possibly continued. This is how it wants to do and go about business it's not even taking just playing rook back and just bullying him basically very very interesting very interesting game i loved it it was very dynamic very nice very enjoyable yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it uh this is, was a game i played online wanted to share with you guys please do leave a like uh leave a comment if you will uh whatever content you'd like to hear from me in the future i'd appreciate it until next time kings and queens have a good one cheers